so uh, thankful for this opportunity to come and speak with you today, just to share with you just some wonderful things uh, that I think that will encourage you and help you in your journey, in your life, and in your walk. Uh, maybe a lot of things right now don't make a whole lot of sense to you. Maybe here in a few minutes, they'll make more sense because I believe that God has something that he wants to speak to you today, that God has something that he wants to say to you. And I know this, that God, he desires to have a relationship with you. Um, anyway, uh, appreciate uh, Danish Peters for the opportunity to share um, and uh, looking forward to uh, this opportunity. Anyway, a little over a month ago, uh, I contracted COVID-19. Um, we all know it's a world pandemic. Uh, many people have, have gotten sick. Uh, uh, I know a lot of people have died from uh, COVID. And uh, one particular day, I started feeling bad. And uh, I just thought to my, this thought hit me, um, you know what, I've got COVID. And I just felt that in my heart. You know what, I have COVID. But I just knew somehow that uh, God was going to use it. And so I went and got tested for, for COVID-19. Uh, my test came back positive. And the first thing I felt when I saw that positive was I felt fear. But um, when, when fear comes knocking, we have to answer with faith. And so, you know what? I knew that everything was in control because many, many years ago, <clears throat> I gave my life to God. We can all make that choice to give our lives to God because God has given each one of us life. Life comes from God. You're not an accident. You're not here uh, by coincidence. God has an idea and that idea was you. And so God has given you this life. You can keep it. You can despise it. You can condemn it or you can give it. And I'm telling you, if you will give your life to God, he will help you become everything that he's intended and created you to be. So when I got COVID, I realized something. That, you know what? God is in control. And I knew somehow that God was going to use this. And, and, and if I can just be honest with you, God has used me getting COVID-19 to help and encourage many, many people with fear. Because the greatest symptom the greatest symptom of COVID-19 is fear. You know, when I got COVID, I had a low fever uh, and chills for one day. And after that, I was really, really tired for like 10 days. And after that, I, be I began to recover and I went back to my normal life. But I really believe that it was my faith in God that gave me the strength to go through it completely. Why? Because you can trust God with your life. When you give him something, He's faithful. He's not like men. He's not uh, unfaithful. He's going to take good care of you. He sees everything. Jesus said he even sees the sparrow. The very hair of your head are numbered. God sees everything about your life. And so he'll take good care of you. And there's this belief in many people that God doesn't care, that he's not there. But after this talk today, I believe that you're going to believe differently about that. Because one of the things that I had to settle in my heart when I got COVID was, you know what? God saw this, God's using this, and I'm going to trust him. And what happens is when you begin to trust God, because he's greater than all, he is the almighty God, two things happen. You experience God's peace, which we all need peace, and we experience God's power. You know, I experienced both of those during COVID. And God began to speak to my heart about many things in his word and about many things that were to come. Because fear is very, very strong in the earth right now. Jesus said before his return in Matthew chapter 24, he said people's heart, men's hearts would fail them for the fear of those things which were coming on the earth. Fear is something that is horrible. It's a terrible thing that so many people experience. But I want you to know when fear comes knocking in your life, you can open the door and answer by faith. You know, when COVID came knocking to my life, I answered by faith. How did I answer? I answered by believing in the goodness of God and that God was in control and that he was going to use this. And I'm here to encourage you today that you can have faith over fear. You say, well, I don't have faith. Yes, you do. The Bible says to each of us has been given a measure of faith. But here's the secret. You must believe in the goodness of God. And maybe you've never experienced the goodness of God. But you know what? 
I believe that you're about to, even by these words that I'm sharing with you. You can trust God with your life, but here's the problem. If you don't think that he's good, you won't trust him. You know, for a long, long time, I didn't think God was good. I thought God was mad. I thought God was all about following a list of rules. And I didn't do very good at following the rules because my behavior wasn't that good, wasn't that wonderful. You know what? People don't know God today, and here's why. Not that God doesn't want to know you. Not that God doesn't want to know people. People don't know God today because they're taught they must achieve to receive instead of what Jesus said, that we must simply believe. Many people think you have to keep the rules. You have to be perfect. You have to do everything right. You have to have everything figured out. You have to understand. But you don't have to do any of those things to have a relationship with God. That's religion. Religion says you've got to do, do, do. But Jesus said, it is finished from the cross. He said, it is done. I want you to know something today. Jesus Christ paid the price in full for you to have a relationship with God, even right where you are right now. Maybe you're in prostitution. Maybe you're in addiction. Maybe you have things in your life that you know are bad and you feel like they disqualify you. Can I tell you something today? Not even those things can keep you from a relationship with God. There's only one thing that can keep you out of a relationship with God, and that is your unbelief. The sin of the world, my sin and your sin, is that we don't believe. But I want you to know something today, that God is good. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever thought? What is your thought and idea? When you think of God, what do you think? What do you see? You see a mad God, an angry God? You see a God far off that doesn't even care. You see a God that couldn't like me. He couldn't love me. If you knew what I did, you would never, ever, ever believe that God could be good to me. But I want you to know something. He is and he was. How do I know that? Because of the cross of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for ungodly people. While we were still his enemies, Jesus died. How do I know God is good? Because I look at the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ hung naked and bloody on a cross. A perfect man. A perfect man. Saying to God, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You see, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice to pay for your failures to pay for your mistakes and mine so that he could show you his goodness. You could never earn it. You could never do it. You could never get there on your own. It's impossible. If, if anybody could, I would have tried because I was so broken and desperate as a young man. But it was at the cross that Jesus was condemned as a sinner so that God could receive you as a son or a daughter. Do you know Jesus traded places with us? He took our place as sinners on a cross so that we could take his place as beloved sons and daughters of God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 that it pleased God Almighty to crush his son, his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him. It doesn't say behave. It says whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That everlasting life doesn't just come when you die and leave this earth. It's meant to come to you right now. God wants to give you life. And the life is his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus paid for your sins. They've already been forgiven. You just have to receive it. God paid the highest price because he wants a relationship with you. And I want to tell you something today. You could never be good enough. You could never be good enough. But you don't have to. Why? Because Jesus already was. Jesus was already good enough. He already satisfied God's holy standard. He already satisfied everything that God said had to happen. Jesus did it for me and for you. But why? So that we could have a relationship with God. That's what God's after. 
a relationship. Yes, he's a spirit, but he'll communicate with you heart to heart. If you don't know him today, you're going to have an opportunity in a few minutes to receive him into your life and begin the most amazing, adventurous journey you could ever imagine. I want to share a couple scriptures with you in Jude verse 3. It says this, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once and for all delivered to the saints. Wow. What is that faith? What produces and gives us a faith that is greater than fear? How do we have faith over fear? Well, I want to tell you, the faith that the Apostle Paul told you to earnestly contend for, it was faith in God. Faith in what he had done for us through Jesus. That faith is a relationship with Almighty God. And I know so many people say, but you don't know how bad I am. But you don't know what I've done. Most people think because of that, they've got to earn it. They've got to do something. When Jesus said, I've already earned it for you. I've already done something. I've already achieved everything that you would have to achieve on your own. All you have to do is put your faith in me. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man can come to God the Father but by me. Why try when you can trust? Everybody's trying to be good enough today. But the faith that was earnestly contended for in the New Testament was a faith that said Jesus was already good enough and you are going to be accepted because of Jesus. You can be healed because of Jesus from COVID and from sickness and from a broken heart or anything else because that's how good and how amazing God is. But so many people get trapped in a lie, trapped that they've got to be better, trapped that they got to try harder, trapped that they've got to find God through organ organized religion. I go to church, but I don't go to church to get a relationship with God. I go to church to learn about him. Some of the people that couldn't get past their hangups, that couldn't get past their own issues, were the very children of God. In the Old Testament, the children of Israel. In Romans chapter 10, I want to read this to you. It's very wonderful and beautiful. And it talks about what we're talking about here today. And one of the reasons that I'm talking about a relationship with God is that when you begin to develop a relationship with God, you will have faith and victory over fear. Why? Because your faith, even if it's real little and real small, it's mighty if your faith is in God. But if you don't believe God is good again, you won't look to him. So in Romans chapter 10, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way by getting right with God, by trying to keep the law and follow rules. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. Another translation says that Jesus is the end of the law for righteousness for those who are being saved. The only way. To be right with God is through faith in Jesus and what he's done. That's wonderful news because it doesn't depend on you. It depends on Jesus. You just have to trust in Jesus. Listen, I'm going to keep reading. As a result, all who believe in Jesus are made right with God. All who believe in Jesus. God's not mad at you anymore. He took his anger. He took his wrath. Everything that he was upset about that we've done in a way that we've fallen short. Listen, he has done it through. He put it all on Jesus at the cross. Jesus took it into the grave. And God's approval was that he raised him from the dead on the third day, saying that I accept all who come to him. Praise God. For it goes on to say, for Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all of its commands. But faith's way, of getting right with God says, 
Don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven, who will achieve to bring Christ to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back from to life again. But in fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from your sins. God is so wonderful to save us and forgive us of our sins, knowing that we'll make mistakes every day, knowing that we'll mess up. He still is wonderful and kind and merciful to forgive us of our sins. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. You know what? Many of you are hearing this right now and you're already believing because this is different than maybe something that you've heard before. I want you to know something. God loves you. He wants you. He's crazy about you. He created you. He knows your mistakes. He knows your hangups. He knows your sin. But he loves you anyway. He chooses you anyway. Will you choose him today? He's amazing. He's wonderful. Listen, the point of all of this is this. That through faith in Jesus, God is no longer angry with us because of our sin. But he accepts us. He loves us. He wants us. He wants you. I didn't think anybody wanted me when I was a young man. I didn't even want myself. I didn't even love myself. And when I realized that Jesus loved me, even in my addiction of drugs, when I realized he loved me, even when I didn't love myself, that's when I made the decision to believe in him and to follow him. That was in 1996. I've followed him since and I will always follow him. Why? Because no one has ever loved me like Jesus loved me. Unconditionally, he loved me and he loves you. Do you know the Bible says that the father of our faith, that gives us victory. The Bible says our victory is in our faith. But the father of our faith was Abraham. Abraham was justified also by his faith. He wasn't a perfect man. He had fears of his own. He even gave his wife to the king and told the king uh, that it was his sister because he was afraid that the king was going to kill him and take his wife because she was very beautiful. Abraham was human just like you and I. But God accounted him as righteous too. Why? Because he believed in God. Jesus had not yet come then. But in the same way, we are made right through faith in Jesus. Abraham at the time was made right through his faith in God. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful news today? We, listen, we are made right with God through our belief, not our behavior. We are made right with God through our belief and not our behavior. I tell people this all the time because they get hung up on the things that are wrong with them. They spend so much time trying to fix themselves. They spend so much time trying to make themselves better to get good enough for God that they don't even have a relationship with him. Man, you don't have to do that. Jesus took your place so that you could take his place. And the Bible calls this in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, the new and living way. Under the Old Testament, before Jesus came, the way was keeping rules. The way were regulations. The way were all of these different things that we had to do. But the law was only given through Moses until Jesus came. But now that Jesus is here, he is the one who fulfilled all of those things for us. And when we put our faith in him, you know what? You won't lie. You won't cheat. You won't steal. And if you do, he'll convict you and you will want to change. When Jesus comes into your life, he changes you. I used to lie. I used to steal. I used to do all those things. But when Jesus came into my life, he made me not want to do those things anymore. Because he loved me like no one else ever did. So I just want to share with you today that you can have faith over fear. What are you afraid of today? If God be for you, and he is, maybe you haven't received him yet, but he's still for you. But if God be for you, then who can be against you? God is for you today. He showed you how much. 
by his son Jesus dying for you on the cross. Would you receive him today? Listen, it says, this faith once delivered to the saints is a faith that knows God is good and enters into his story by faith. Believing in God to fully accomplish his purpose through you. Do you know that God has a purpose for you? Do you know that he has a plan? He has a place just for you. It's time. It's time to receive that. It's time to walk in that. And what God is doing in you as you trust in him, he will do it from the beginning to the end. You just simply have to believe in him. Do you believe in Jesus today? I want you to know something. He is the son of God. He did die for you on a cross 2,000 years ago. If you're Muslim, he died for you. If you're Hindu, he died for you. If you're an atheist, if you don't even believe, he died for you. It's the truth. I'm a living testimony. He changed my life when I believed. Do you believe that he was raised from the dead, overcoming sin, death, and the grave? The Bible says if you do, call upon the name of Jesus. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to save you. He will. You will become a member of the family of God. And God's perfect love can and will cast out all of your fear. Do you know what God's perfect love is? His name is Jesus. And he gives him to you. All you have to do is receive it. He will forgive you of your sins. He will help overcome your fears. He will touch your body. He can heal you of your sickness. All of those things. Because he loves you. He loves us. There are many, many proofs that this is true, what I'm sharing with you. But the greatest proof that Jesus is the Son of God are people like me, people like Danish, so many people whose lives have been changed, who were in a very bad place, who called upon the name of the Lord and they were saved. He loves you, friend. Today is your day. What do you have to do? Just turn to Jesus. Put your faith in him. Call upon his name today. Jesus, save me. I, I, I need you. I want you. Oh, man, he will reveal himself. But here's what, something that I want you to know. No matter where you are, no matter what you have done or are doing, he won't condemn you, but he will come and he will save you. Right in the midst of anything, because He's overcome. He will come and fill you. He'll come and save you. He'll come and use you for his own glory. He did all those things for me. I was addicted. All of these things. When I began to call upon the name of the Lord. And you know what? He met me. He will love you like you've never, ever been loved and never known before. Here's what the Bible says. And this is why I'm here today. Jesus told his followers in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Those who believe and are baptized will be saved. Those who do not believe will be condemned. You see, friends, the world is not. have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. People in the world are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, the gift that came from God for you. And it doesn't matter what religion, color, where you are in the earth, where you are in the world, where you are in your sin, where you are anywhere. Whosoever, the Bible says, will believe in him will be saved. This salvation, this gospel, is for you. I want to pray for you today. Maybe you're struggling with COVID-19. Maybe you're struggling with sickness. Maybe you're struggling with condemning thoughts. Maybe suicide. I don't know. I know this. Jesus Christ is coming to meet you. He's coming to help you. He's coming to you right where you are today. Because he loves you. He sent me today from Oklahoma to tell you this truth. So Lord God, I just thank you today for every person watching. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch them.
Come on, would you put your hand right there? Put your hand on my hand. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would touch. Lord, and heal and deliver and save, Lord God. Those who are hearing, Lord. Lord, you simply ask us to believe. And I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that as you uh, restored me from COVID-19, that others listening that may have it, I just say be healed in the name of Jesus. What I'm really saying to you, too, as you receive this, is just to let go and let God trust him. He's good. He loves you. You don't have to do anything but believe. Lord, I pray that you would heal the sick. I pray that you would deliver those without peace. Lord, that young man who has thought about suicide, no, no, don't do it. Why? Because God loves you and he has a plan for your life. Everything's going to turn around. Turn to Jesus. Turn to God. He's going to make a way for you. Lord, I pray that you would reveal your salvation through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ, and that your blood would wash away every sin. Lord, that you would touch every single person listening under the sound of my voice. And I bind fear in the name of Jesus. I bind fear from your life. I bind you fear. I rebuke you. Every lie, every fear of the enemy, I bind and break it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just speak peace over your mind and the power of God over your life. Lord, let signs, wonders, and miracles come in to those who are listening's lives and hearts and circumstances till they know, Lord, that you are who I say you are that you are who you say you are, for you are a mighty God. Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself to those listening today and that the power of the Holy Spirit would reach down deep into every life and touch them and that you would perform miracles in their lives today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, brothers and sisters, for the opportunity to share this word with you. You're not listening by accident. God had you listening today. I want you to know that what you're going through may be impossible for you or for man, but it's not impossible for God. Faith is the answer. Faith in God. You can be confident in him today to meet your need and to make the way because he's a good God. Thank you, brothers and sisters for watching this today, and God bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.